Beautiful. And that's why we sing hallelujah. Because God is good to us. If you survived last night's storm, you know what I mean. I already put in at least half an hour's labor before I came to the church to clear up the debris and I didn't know if I'll ever get out of Shinoa because every road is closed. Either the trees are down or the electric wiring is down. So uh, working through all that, praise God that we all are safe. God has given us another opportunity to uh, present ourselves in his presence. And yes, that's why we sing hallelujah, because we know God comes to us with words of safety, protection, healing, strength, and empowerment. And what a day to celebrate when the sun is shining brightly and a little bit of rain has helped the ground once again to be uh, embalmed, I call it, because the cracks are gone and it's like a moisturizer to the surface of the soil and uh, suddenly we know that God is in charge. Uh, having said that, welcome to each and every one of you and good morning and may the blessed Lord be always with you, guide you, uphold you uh, in all your endeavors. As we gather together, our announcements are here at the back uh, of our uh, bulletin. Um, looks like we have already shared those in the past. We still need some volunteers for the children's message. If you can do your part, we will appreciate that. Uh, also keep in mind that last week I received an email uh, from our uh, missionary couple from Zimbabwe and they are itinerating in the conference. They had given us some open dates to be able to come and share their story. And I did not feel comfortable for them to come in person uh, here at the church at this time. So what is going to happen is I have been in contact with Carolyn Yaki, who is our missionary contact coordinator of the conference that they are going to send us their missionary uh, presentation, their storytelling, what they are doing uh, through an email to me, and I will be forwarding that to uh, each and every one of you. Uh, I thought previously that they were being sponsored by UMW, but I came to know that we as a church, we support their ministry. And so in future, you will be receiving that. Uh, so please be mindful of uh, keeping them in your prayers and also their ministry, the support that you give, I think it means a lot to them to keep up the gospel story going. Also, message has been received from the annual conference that uh, our annual conference will be on August 15th, and they are giving us two options. I think it pertains to the lay delegates, which is Harold and uh, the pastor, uh, that we are to register over the uh, website and choose if we want to watch it or participate it from our home or do we want to gather at a central point. For our Vermilion River District, we have Coal City United Methodist Church as the point of gathering. Uh, if you are just interested in knowing how the logistics work, how propositions are brought to the floor. If you are interested to attend, you can go there, but you will be a person without vote. And to my knowledge, I don't think they will let you in. So just word of caution, you can watch the whole proceeding over the conference website. They will be putting in the videos and special offerings and so on and so forth, special worship services uh, for you to be informed. But they're trying to play very safe and keep it only to the voting delegates in person. And if you want to watch, you can watch from home, register online, but without words. So I thought that I will pass out that information to you. Then our volunteers are listed here at the uh, end uh, for the next week. And any other announcements before we proceed to the birthdays and anniversaries? Okay, if no announcements, then our birthdays that we celebrate July 14th is Amy's birthday, 15th 
uh, Thai gets to celebrate his birthday. We also have anniversaries. Uh, July 14th, Marty and Terry Artman, they celebrate their anniversary, and on 15th, Rick and Karen Bauman. And I don't think any of the birthday people are here, but I think Terry is here. We extend our blessings to you and your other half, and may God continue to bless you, okay? And even the birthdays, uh, lift these two young souls in your prayer um, for birthday blessings. And then please don't miss out on our uh, prayer list. Very important for us to be a praying church because God is doing miracle after miracle amidst us. Your prayers are being answered. You don't know the power that God has given to you through your faith in Jesus Christ. So continue to use that. Um, seems like we don't have any birthdays to sing, so let's begin our uh, worship service. If I may ask you to stand for the call to worship and prayer of confession and words of assurance, please. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Join together in prayer of confession, please. We stand in the light of the glory of God Almighty. He has been good to us, but the world around us is changing. We have stopped listening to the voice of our Savior. The darkness of sin takes over our lives. The message of reconciliation in Jesus is in our hearts to guide us through this. Praise be to God. Words of assurance for us to reflect on as a prayer thought. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. This is the promise of God for us. Amen. You may be seated, please. And at this time, we turn our attention to our uh, joys and concerns, our time of prayer. Uh, do we have anything that you would like to share at this time? Yes. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us. Let's bar, yeah, Terry. This is more of an announcement, but um, the Presbyterian Praise Center is going to be performing a Duncan Parker Theater on July 22nd. Okay. So when it gets that it's the only thing that you'll always be able to do. Okay, thank you for that information. Let's bar heads then and come to the Lord in prayer. God gives us life full of blessings. 
ability to be a human being. This life comes with all its challenges, physical, emotional, social, and spiritual. But just because God has made us human beings, he doesn't leave us alone. When he sends us in the world, he also gives us the power of discernment. He also gives us wisdom. He gives us his word. And he holds our hand. So that when we walk through this journey of life into eternity, we are assured that our creator is with us. And with those thoughts, I invite you into this time of devotion, this time of prayer. Dear gracious Lord, almighty, powerful, slow to anger, healer, counselor, and our king, our living savior, it is appropriate for us to raise the voices of Alleluia, Amen, praise the Lord. Come, dear Lord, because we know that we need you every minute of this life. Heavenly God, on this blessed morning, we come through the storms and rain and wind and everything else that could have broken us down, availing this opportunity to sit in your presence as a faith family. You have allowed us once again to define ourselves under the banner of your love, that we are your children. You have guided us, you have chosen us, you have uplifted us, and you have granted us this opportunity once again to remember that your grace is sufficient for us. Heavenly God, this morning as we come together, we are mindful of those who are celebrating their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries, special days of recognition. We ask that your blessings abide with each and every one of them. Continue to uphold them in their faith journey and let them be your witnesses of love and grace and faith wherever they are able to tell their stories. And then we bring our prayers of healing and strength for all those who need it. The comforting arms that need to be felt around us, the healing empowerment that we seek for our loved ones, prayers for Amy Palmer at this time, the concern has been shared with you as she goes through her own treatments that you will surround her with your grace. There are others who are in our prayers for healing, uplifting strength. And then Lord, we make an effort to pray for our communities where we live because it is a time of witness. It's a time to share our faith. It is an opportunity to participate in sowing the seeds of faith, wherever, whenever, and however it is possible. Be with each one of us that are gathered here. You know the prayers of our hearts. We raise our concerns unto you, and then offer you a praise of thanksgiving because you have been our dwelling place in all generations. And so, Lord, we ask you to bless our families, our children and grandchildren, our extended families. May we all exist under your safety and protection. Hear our prayer, O Lord, because we ask this prayer 
in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I don't see any kids um, in the worship service, so maybe we can skip this and let's come to the time of our presenting our tithes and offerings. Let's participate in our offertory prayer at this time. Dear blessed Lord, as much as we desire to live in harmony with you, the mission of the faith is always in our hearts. Through this offering, we make an effort to share the message of Christ. Bless the givers and the ministry of this church. Amen. There's a story about a Scottish pastor. Uh, conclusion of uh, the year as uh, he ministered in this church. He wrote in his diary, this last year has been a failure. I have brought only one soul to Christ little David Livingston. The tragedy of the story is that this pastor did not live long enough to see the work of his life come to fruition, bearing fruits. He is the one who sowed the seed of faith in this little David Livingston, who grew up to be a pioneer medical missionary in Africa, inventor, reformer, and anti-slavery crusader. Many times as pastors, we get to wonder, and Frank and I coming from a culture where um, visible witness and time of sharing and what God is doing in the lives of the people matters, and we put it into words, and over and over during the worship service, we get to witness how God is winning souls, performing miracles, healing people, uh, sometimes we talk about our ministry journey here in the United States. And sometimes, like this Scottish pastor, we wonder if we have made any difference 
in anyone's life through all these uh, maybe 20 plus some churches between Frank and I that we have served. How about you? You have existed here for maybe 87 plus years? How many? Over 100. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I apologize. In these 100 plus years, how it has been your outreach that has even touched one small David Livingston. As we approach this parable of the sower, I think ever since we were children, I know from my experience that this was one of the first um, parable that amazed me, surprised me, because uh, I grew up with seeds. My mom was a gardener. My dad planted roses like you wouldn't believe. So I was very much fam familiar with how the seeds grow. What amazed me was in this parable, there, the seeds don't change. Seeds are seeds. But the growing pattern is different. And I think that is what intrigued me in this parable right from the start. And I have kept my observation alert enough to see what it means to be a sower, what it means to be a seed, what it means to be the soil, and how the growth takes place. In this whole parable, there may I can divide that into four um, snippets, four characters, four uh, segments of the story. The most important part of the parable, of course, is the sower. And I'm addressing a agricultural community here. You guys, you know your seeds. You know that how to choose the seed, what your needs are, what your requirements are, and if the seed will fulfill that. And your competition is always to grow the best seed in the ground. And the selection of the seed is based on your need. What will bring forth the greatest yield? That's the prize. That's the harvest. That's the end point that we all look for. Here is a sower. He doesn't have a combine or cedar or uh, pesticide or we uh, decide sprayer. All he has is a bag, maybe made out of a cloth. Um, they used to have like a two yards of material or three yards of material, make a knot here, make a knot here, and whatever the pouch was, just like the kangaroo pouch, they will fill it with seed, and then they will go to the fields and start scattering them. Very simple way of farming, nothing complicated. And this sower is a typical farming experience, a farmer person who knows his trade, who knows his job. He is prepared for the job. He has a cloth bag full of seeds that defines him. And for us to remember that picture in our mind, that this man was a farmer, he has a bag, he has seeds, and he has a purpose to sow the seeds. He's not hogging those seeds in his bag. He steps out. It is the time to sow the seeds. And it seems like for this, par for this farmer, to reach to the place where he can put the seeds, he has to walk quite a distance. 
And during that time, the things that begin to take place illustrate in the words of Christ what it means for him and for us to sow the seeds in this world. Actually, in this imagery of sower, this farmer, Christ himself is projecting his work. He has been sent into the world to sow the seed of God's love, God's forgiveness, salvation, eternal life, God's kingdom. And in a very simple way, he is going about teaching and healing and feeding and breaking bread with sinners and reading the scriptures in the synagogue and meeting with people. But in all doing this, there is a culture of hostility that he has created. People are not in tune with his style of farming. They are becoming more and more agitated. On one hand, they want the healing. On the other hand, they want the food, the feeding, the promise of God's kingdom. But within that, there is this storm that keeps brewing. And Christ knew the kind of crowd he is dealing with. Each time he tells a parable, he says, those who have ears, hear. Pay attention to that. As a sower, as the farmer, as the one who has come into this world to sow the seeds of God's love, he makes us alert. Those of you who have ear, hear. I am the one who has been sent to sow the seeds in the hearts of the people. And Jesus makes a very simple point, being the sower. He doesn't come with machinery and high-tech equipment. All he has is a pouch full of good news seeds of promise, and he walked through this world. He has hope. He has a projected harvest in his mind, and that's why he came. The second uh, part of the story is the seed. I should say are the seeds because, yeah, there's a whole weight of them. The seed, we who live in corn and bean country, we know that some of you also grow wheat and millet down south, and it is the seed, as I shared, defines you, what kind of a farmer you are. And when you put the seeds into the ground, it is your hope, projected hope of a good harvest. This farmer has a hole in his pouch. There's a song, right? The hole in a bucket. Change it into a hole in a pouch or in his bag. I wonder if he knew that. But as he is walking to the destined place, the seeds are falling. Seeds are falling. The first batch, or maybe some of the seeds, they fall on the rocky ground. And the scorching heat takes over, and these seeds have no chance to grow. And then he keeps walking, and the seeds fell by the roadside. And the birds of the air they came and they picked those up. 
they became the food for the birds. And then he had to walk through a thicket. Maybe there were lots of hedges that he had to cross, wilderness part. And that hole kept on giving. Some seeds fell through under these bushes, thickets. Yeah, there was soil, there was ground, and they grew up, but the already grown up bushes had taken over and they had little chance. And then finally, he reaches to the place where the seeds should be. He scatters them. And if you notice that in this gospel, Matthew begins with 100% and 60% and 30% and each according to its need. There is no guarantee that the, word, uh, that the seeds that were sown would bring forth 100%. And I can uh, speak on behalf of that. This morning I saw the east part of town in Shinoa. Yesterday's um, storm has flattened the corn absolutely flat field. And I said a prayer for the farmer who had worked hard and these plants which are almost like four or five feet high, will they ever rise up? I need education on that. That's the possibility also of harvest. That's why 100% and 60% and 30%. There is always that chance, but there is the promise of the fruit. Spiritually speaking, the seed speaks to us about the word of God. John in his gospel begins his gospel with saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and everything that God created was created by him. That created word means what? The harvest, bringing forth growth, and this word became flesh, dwelt amidst us, and we saw the glory of the Lord in this word. Christ himself carried that seed, that word of God in him, and he shared it with the crowd, and in that crowd there were four kinds of people. I shouldn't speak in past tense, because even today, as the gospel is shared, we fall into one of those kind of grounds. But the seed remains the same. Keep that in mind. Seed doesn't change. It fell on the rocky place, it fell by the roadside, it fell under the bushes, it fell, under, uh, fell into the fertile ground. Seed is seed, it remains the same which means that the gospel story never changes. No matter where you live, who you are, what culture you belong to, that word of God, that seed of God stays the same. For God so loved the world that he gave us his begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And this is the message that you and I are called to sow, share, scatter. So that brings me to the third point. That's the soil. And as Christ mentioned, four kinds of soil, some with no grip on what they are supposed to do, the rocky soil, as hard as snow, as stone. They hear the word, doesn't flourish in them. Some of us are like the soil by the roadside. There is a soil, it's covered with concrete and tar and so many other things. And as the seed, the word of God falls on us, the worries of the world, they just come and pick, 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 and the word is gone. And then 
some of us are like full of already growing bushes, worry, anxiety, tension. We hear the word of God, we receive the word of God, but it just stays here, just a ground cover. It doesn't get time to grow in us because all these other things take over our lives. And then the final is the ground where seeds have a chance to grow. Another interesting thing is that uh, scriptures never mention that this fertile ground belonged to the sower or not. If that was his field, the ownership is not there. But it just mentions that there is a fertile ground. The sower is at his work, sow the seed. The word of God gets put into our hearts. And if you are this kind of soil that receives the word of God, that allows it to grow, then harvest is sure. Yes, there will be storms that your crop might get flattened up, but the strength that God has given to you, the roots that spread out in you, they will once again provide the nourishment and your life will be a blessing. And don't let me forget the fourth part of the story. Under unnoticed, undetected, there is a force that is working in these seeds. And that is God who gives us the harvest. Word doesn't change. Seed doesn't change, but we, the soil, the ground changes. How we receive the word matters. Am I a rocky ground? Am I the ground by the roadside? Am I the one that is full of already bushes and thickets? Or am I the soil that receives God's word freely, generously? and allows it to grow. But remember, the process of growth is not in your control. It's not in my control. When the word is sown in me, God is the one who allows it to grow. As this Scottish pastor, disappointed, wrote, I was only able to get through this small, young child, David Livingston. Today your calling is also to sow the seed of faith, not only in your life, but in the lives of those around you. Maybe there is a small David Livingston waiting to receive the word. You may not live to see the fruit of your labor, of your storytelling, of your witness, of your prayer life, but God is preparing the David Livingstons because you shared the gospel, because you sowed the seed, because you shared Christ with them. The sower and the seed, they remain the same. Christ and his word never change. Salvation story for everyone is the same. Repent of your sin, believe in the Son of God, and be saved. But it matters what kind of soil I am. From this parable, you and I, we need to learn to be the kind of soil that brings about the yield. May not be 100%, maybe 60%, 30%, or maybe some promise of yield. That small David Livingston matters. Go out and start sowing the seed. Share your stories. Let people know 
that God is alive in your life and continue to live your faith. And may the blessings of God's faithfulness always abide with you. Let's conclude with benediction. God Almighty has set you aside to bring glory to his name. Equipped with faith, we face the world to serve in the name of Christ. May your journey of life be blessed because God is with you. Amen.